Matt, uh, kind of give us an orientation here. We've got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, what do we have here? Sure. Um, so this is where we're bringing in the bones that we dug out in the field. Okay. And um, you can see that all these are wrapped in aluminum foil up here. And the reason is because... You're not going to cook them, are you? No, hopefully not. I mean, we'll talk to whoever's in charge, but yeah, the basic idea here is that we don't want a bone that we pulled out, if it does fall apart, we don't want the pieces to get everywhere. So it keeps it inside the foil, keeps it safe for when it bring back to Texas. And these have been extracted by a number of individuals? Yep, yep, all across the area where we dig up bones, different people, and they put their names on them, so you know who dug it out. And over here is where we keep all the kits for the stuff we actually need to get the bones out. You can see there's lots of glue bottles. That's very important. This is the super glue? That is the super glue. What do you use this for? Uh, hopefully not getting your fingers together. Yeah. But mainly you want to put these bones back together. Okay. Um, when they come out, sometimes they'll be damaged by roots or even just the compaction from the sediment can fracture them. And so you want to put glue on it to make sure it comes out one piece. Mm -hmm. And what happens to these now? What's the next phase for all these? Yeah, so what's going to happen is that uh, these are going to be packed up, um, they'll put some of this foam in here between them so they don't break, and they're gonna bring them back to Texas, and these are gonna be prepared in a preparation lab there by people who know what they're doing and take all the rest of the sediment off, make them nice. Um, these over here, this is a lot of work. Um, you know, there's a big femur here, there's another one there, and these are have to be in these plaster jackets because they're so big and heavy, we wanna make sure that they stick together. This is gonna take a lot of extra time to actually prepare. You can see on there. But these will go back to the lab as well? They will go back to the lab, yep. And then um, will those bones that go back to the lab, are they gonna be try to be articulated or what will, what's the purpose of the next step? Yeah, so there's lots of different things we can learn. Um, Sometimes when you prepare these bones, this one's nice because it kind of came out already prepared, um, you'll find what we consider taphonomic marks. So marks that tell us a little bit about what happened at the death or in between death and uh, finding it as a fossil um, to these bones. So we've got a bone right here, um, and this is from a, a tyrannosaur, but it's got tooth marks all over it. And uh, usually you can't see these till after you prepare it, but this bone was nice to us and already had them visible. So uh, you can see that teeth have been dragged along here and that's telling us about animals eating each other, um, feeding. And we can use that kind of evidence to help us build a story and tell what happened here. How can you tell the difference between um, teeth mark and let's say just the rolling over a rock in, sure. a, in, a, you know, in a current? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the, this is one of the things we're actually studying as a kind of a team of graduate students. And there are certain signatures you can look for. Um, one of the things that's really helpful here, dinosaurs have little serrations on their teeth, like a steak knife, you know, it's got the um, little edge there. Mm -hmm. And so if a dinosaur is dragging its tooth on the surface, if it happens to drag slightly to the side, you're gonna get this row of little tiny scratches. And you can actually see one of those right here. Um, mm -hmm. And so that is where the tooth was, it was coming down and then it turned at the last minute. And so that's how, this one's a really good example of a definite tooth mark there. Uh -huh. Nothing else is gonna leave that signature. So something was chewing on that, but yes. you don't know what it is. Well, that's what we wanna know. Uh -huh. um, we do know it's a dinosaur because of the serrations. Okay. Things like crocodiles don't have those. Um, and based on the size, we're thinking it might be another tyrannosaur. So this could be some kind of instance of cannibalism. And can you tell whether that was um, obviously being done uh, during a fight, or was it done after this just lying around on the ground? That's a really hard thing to tell. So um, occasionally we get really lucky with a fossil and you'll find like a tooth embedded in it, and maybe you'll get healing around it, and you know, okay, that's a failed mm -hmm. predation attempt or something. But yeah, this could be at the moment of death, could be scavenging. I think it's not just fighting, I think it's eating because of how deep these are, how many there are. Um, it seems like something was really trying to eat this. Uh, you seem to be pretty excited about this stuff. Yes, I am very excited about this stuff. It's a lot of fun. And um, I understand you're doing your PhD work in this area. Yeah. Tell us about that. Sure. Yeah, so I'm looking at, uh, there's a bone bed up there that was discovered only a few years ago, and it's called uh, Rose Quarry, that's what we call it. And the bones up there, they're kind of like this, where um, this isn't a whole bone, right? It's uh, fractured on both ends. Um, you can see this bone right here is totally whole. So in the main quarries, we're getting bones 
like this that are well preserved, they look really nice, it's a whole bone. In rose quarry we're getting things that are beat up, they're damaged, they've been chewed on, they've been stepped on, so we want to know what's going on at that site. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're studying the taphonomy. Uh, we want to know what happened from the moment these animals died until we find them as fossils. So that there, what's really cool is we've seen these um, really big chunks of mud in the middle of the deposit too. I mean, just huge, uh, sometimes meter diameter type chunks. And that's telling us something about the energy that was involved in this process. So these bones were tumbling around in a flood event and this uh, ripped up mud class mm -hmm. too. Those are getting moved along and it's getting deposited where we can find it today. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool work because we get to learn how that, all that kind of stuff works out. So give us a definition for taphonomy. Yeah, so taphonomy, um, it's the science of everything that happens to an organism from the moment it dies until you find it as a fossil. So that could include things like um, scavenging, it could include um, breakage of bones, how it got buried, maybe it was buried um, you know, in a lake or a river or something like that. Um, it can tell you about what's called diagenesis, which goes on inside uh, while it's becoming a rock. So different fluids flow through it, minerals, stuff like that. And so all those things are telling, we put it all together and make a story out of it and try and understand what's going on. So it's a little bit like CSI. Yeah, actually it's a lot yeah. like CSI. Um, you know, we, uh, a lot of the methods kind of overlap on those mm -hmm. things. Now the difference is that we're dealing with stuff that, I mean, this is pretty much a rock now, even right. though it's still got bone material in it. Whereas CSI, they're hopefully dealing with something that hasn't been too long ago. <laughs> can put it together. Well, would you encourage other people to consider following you in this area? Oh, absolutely. We need good uh, paleontologists. We need good geologists. It's an exciting field to be in, and uh, there's lots to do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it very much. Yeah.